The other day I was using this electronic load to test a power supply and the link to that video up there and it occurred to me that I've never actually done a review of this particular unit although a long long time ago I did review its little brother. These two devices are essentially identical apart from their power rating. So this one is the 110 watt and this is the earlier version which only supports up to 60 watts but functionally they are the same. It does say that the firmware has been enhanced on this unit but as far as the operation is concerned it, as I say it is identical. This I've just taped over the display to make it more visible on the camera. Obviously the thing is, is bare bones, it doesn't come with any enclosure and for me that's fine, it just sits on the bench as and when I need it. The main connection you can see here for the mode, positive and negative, it does however support a four wire mode which you can connect the additional two wires to this connector here. We have a simple rotary encoder to select the numbers that we want and that also has a push function to select the different ranges and a main run stop button. The device is powered externally by a 12 volt supply and that needs to be up to about one amp uh, for this particular unit with the fan. I think you can get away with half an amp for the, for the smaller guy but these type of power bricks are pretty universal and this, this one is one amp and it works perfectly. The load can support a voltage of up to 30 volts and a current of up to 9.99 amps. However, don't start thinking that you can load 30 volts at 9.99 amps because it's limited to the 110 watts. If you try and go over current, it will automatically detect that and stop anything bad happening. There are two main modes, function one and function two. It comes by default in function one, which is the electronic load, and then we can put it into function two and look at the battery capacity measurement capability. With that waffling out of the way, let's set it up now and go through the electronic load. The unit is shipped in the default electronic load configuration or function one. In this configuration, if we press on the rotary encoder, it switches between setting the volts and the amps. This voltage is a cutoff voltage, which is kind of optional. In this particular test that I'm doing, it's not particularly relevant, but if you were testing a battery, then you may want to set the minimum voltage there so that it won't over discharge. Pressing again just gets us down into the tenths of a volt and pressing again gets us down to amps. I have the power supply set for 25 volts, theoretically it being able to supply six amps, which is obviously going to be too much for this. 25 volts at four amps is 100 watts, and this is 110 watts, so it won't go very much over four amps. The load is set, as we can see, for two amps. So now if we start the test just by pressing the run, nothing happens because the power supply is not switched on. So that's an alarm. Now switching the power supply on, we can see the 25 volts. Let's try that again. And now the 25 volts is indicated on the display here. And on the power supply, we can see the supplied current at two amps. Now if we increase that up to three amps, we're now generating 75 watts. And we go to four amps, as I predicted, 100 watts. And once we start to get over that, we hit the limit of the device at 110 watts, well, 111, nearly four and a half amps. So you can see that it has a, a, a built-in protection. It's not going to destroy itself. It knows that that is the maximum that it can dissipate. Uh, the fan is wearing away and it's only just getting warm at the moment. You can hear now the speed of the fan increasing, so that's under some intelligent control. Probably back that off down to 100 watts or so. And that should quite happily sit there and with that load 
ad infinitum. And clearly, once you've finished your test, just click the button there to switch off. The electronic load function is very simple. Next, we'll move on to the battery capacity measurement. Moving on now to battery capacity, which was the main reason I bought this unit in the first place. Let's compare a couple of battery packs. These were both bought at the same time from the same source and are probably around five years old. They started off performing pretty much identically, but over time, one of them has significantly lost its capacity. Now, from the get-go, I was a little bit confused because on the package here, it says 25C, which suggests that it could be discharged at 25 times 1300, which seems doubtful to me. Um, but there's another stick here that says 5C, which is possibly nearer the mark or possibly not. For today's test, we'll use 2C, which makes it 26 or 2.6 ampere hours, and we'll see how we get on. To set up our, our load into the battery capacity measurement, we hold down the run button whilst we power the unit on. And we can see it's in function one at the moment. So we just change the encoder there and press it. And that is now in function two. I've set the cutoff voltage now to nine volts. This is a three cell pack. So probably the absolute minimum that you'd want to get down to is three volts per cell, nine volts. And here we can see the 2.6 ampere. Like many flyers and uh, RC modelists, I use one of these cheap and cheerful indicators just to check a battery before I'm going to fly or whatever. We check this battery here. 12.4, 412, 413, 415. So that seems to be okay. And its companion Twelve two, four oh nine, four oh three, four one one. Tiny bit lower, but on the face of it, fairly close. Let's put our battery here onto the torture rig and let's leave this attached so that we can keep a check on the individual cell voltages. Starting the test by pressing the run button now. That J52, by the way, means that it has detected that it's only in two wire mode. If you saw J54 and had the other pair of wires connected for the voltage sense, then it would be in its four wire mode. So there's nothing to set for that. It detects it automatically. Looking at the numbers, we can see that this LED is cycling between voltage Ampere hours and watt hours. Monitoring the cells now, down to 11.5, 3.83, 3 3.79, 3 3.83. So clearly that's going to take a little while until the battery gets down to the nine volts that we've programmed. So I'll stop the video there and come back nearer that point. Everything happened a little more quickly than I anticipated. At only 967 milliampere hours, the alarm has gone off, so the voltage went under 9 volts. It's bounced back now that the unit has disconnected, and we can see 366, 329, 368. So this battery pack is performing well under the 1300, and as I'm feeling it now, it's quite warm. So clearly time has taken its toll on its capacity. Let's stop that now. Let's now compare it against its brother. Pressing stop again, back to our start position. So let's start the test now with this battery. And already, as you can hear, 
the battery voltage has plummeted rapidly, only 19 milliampere hours. So this pack is completely shot. Now what is the mechanism behind this? We've used our battery capacity tester to verify that the capacity is extremely low compared to what it was when it was new. The answer can be found by looking at the internal resistance of these cells. So the, the battery that did the 900 odd milliampere hours, if we check its internal resistance, we have 11, 11 and 9 milliohms. Comparing that against the one which went dead almost immediately, hundred and four ninety nine forty eight. So the numbers tell you all that you need to know. The internal resistance of the cells in this pack has gone up so high that it can no longer produce significant amount of current. A month or maybe two ago I bought this battery pack which looks remarkably similar. Uh, this is spec'd at 1500 milliampere hours. It says it's 40C. Well I have yet to uh, to validate that, but let's take a look at its resistance. So there you have it, seven, nine, and six milliohms. So for a good battery pack in new condition, those are the sorts of numbers that you're looking at. And if you monitor these numbers over time, as they gradually get higher you're going to notice the if you notice any one of the cells like the one that we saw 104 milliohms then you're not going to get off the ground quite literally a little aside there but we used the battery capacity tester to find that there was a, a problem with a pack and that's a better way to do it than than flying but this i feel is a very useful device to have around the workshop